Hey guys, Stas here again for another lovely warm afternoon uh, up in Newcastle. Here for another quick video for Beer Co. I'm just preparing some grains for a brew day behind me and um, there's been a couple of questions about what sort of grain crush. Uh, people are not quite sure about uh, how their grain should be uh, when they're doing an all grain um, brew. And of course, <laughs> like many things, the answer is that depends on what your system is, what your um, grain bill is, and a whole lot of variables. But there's some basic rules. Um, you basically want to do a, a, it's a balance between having the husk, the outer layer of the grain remaining intact, so that in the mash process and as the wort is starting to recirculate through, it's going to create a nice filter bed which will allow the, the water or the liquid to go through but it will catch the debris, the little bits of grain so that they, uh, they won't gum up your, uh, your beer or your, your, your sparge or your runoff. Um, but you also want to make sure that you crack the grain in such a way that you want to get, um, you allow the water or the wort to access the inner parts of the grain so that the enzymes can convert the starches in the grain into uh, fermentable sugars. That's basically what happens in the mash. If you want to think of a, a basic rule, think about it as you want to have a, a, like an almost intact husk and the inner grain broken into roughly four pieces. If you go too fine, uh, you can end up with this really sticky powder. Uh, which can make uh, lead to stuck sparges or really slow runoffs. Um, and if you go too coarse, if it, if, the, if the grain's only just maybe just cracked, or maybe some of the grain doesn't actually get um, cracked with the mill, you can end up with um, a lower efficiency because the enzymes in the grain and the, can't actually get to the starches to convert them into fermentable sugars. Let's have a look and see what we've got in my mill here. So I've just got a little bit of grain. This is what you should do um, if you haven't calibrated your grain before. Just put a little bit in there. This is just Pilsner malt um, in a bucket. And we're gonna run it through the mill, see how we go. Here we have some grain that's been pretty well crushed. I've got my mill already set. I know this is a fairly good setting for my mill. Um, so the, the husks, this part here, um, they're still fairly intact, and, but you can see that um, there's no or very few grains that have been um, got, have gone through the mill without being crushed, and that's kind of where you want to be. You can sort of tinker around with um, finer crush depending on your uh, setup. I know the brew in a bag. Uh, brewers, they can sort of get away with a slightly finer crush because they lift out their grain, they don't need to worry about a sparge necessarily, so, or stuck sparge that is. Yeah, so as a general rule of thumb, a lot of people say, uh, think of if you already have a mill at home and you buy your grains uh, in bulk without them being crushed and you're not sure about where to set your mill, um, people say maybe a credit card thickness, uh, but it really depends on many things like how dry your um, grain is. For example, if you, your roasted malts probably are gonna break apart much easier than uh, maybe a base malt. Some base malts are fatter, some base malts are thinner. It really just depends. So um, often uh, homebrew shops will just kind of set their mill at a sort of middle of the rung. It should work for everyone if you buy your grain pre-crushed. Um, just when you when you get it and you're not maybe you're getting some efficiency issues or you're having a sparge that lasts a long time uh, you might want to sort of start looking at the crush that you're getting from your local homebrew store or, or supplier um, and just have a think about you know does this look right is it too fine is there a lot of flour down powder down the bottom or am I seeing a lot of um, uh, intact or still full uh, husks still there um, again, you can play around with this uh, depending on the grist and depending on the, your system and how, the way that you brew. If you're finding that you do get a stuck sparge or, or you, you, you think you've, you've milled your grain too fine, you can put in some rice hulls, uh, which you can buy very cheaply, just a, a handful or two in the mash. Uh, it will just cr help to create that filter bed which the, um, the grain hull uh, should 
be providing already if you do everything correct, but it's fairly easy and cheap insurance to uh, hopefully avoid a really long sparge. So anyway, hopefully that's given you some information on how to um, crush your grain or to assess the crush of your grain. Uh, if you found this video useful, make sure you click the like button or send us a comment uh, down below and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really helps us, uh, helps us out if we know that people are um, interested in the content that we're making. And uh, if you use the coupon code CRUSH, you can go over to uh, Beerco, which is linked in the description below, for a 10% discount off anything in store. So uh, until the next video, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing, brought to you by Beerco. I'll see you in the next video. Happy brewing.